and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. Today we're gonna make waterfalls. Yes, pretty cool. Wow. First, we're going off to uh, a place I grew up in. Uh, I spent a lot of my childhood there playing. I came home wet and uh, all bruised. My mom wasn't all that happy that we were there, but it was a great place to play. This place consists from two ponds, one of them is a dam, and next to the dam there has been a sawmill, so they have a bit of a waterfall where the wheel has been before. And pretty nice! You know, my memory of that waterfall was that it was huge! Now, coming back 35 years later, it was not that big and maybe not what I was looking for for my model railroad. Uh, but then I found this picture, uh, it's a waterfall from Japan. This one's really cool, so I will have a bit of a Japanese corner on my layout. Let's get started. I cut paper until they fit on in the position of the dams, and then I put them on a piece of planking plywood, which I cut with a saw, and then I try them in place. Both so it looks good and so they are in line horizontally with each other. I will now make a kind of plaster from wood glue, water with a 50-50 mix and toilet paper. The advantage with this is that it's a kind of tacky uh, plaster uh, which do not crack and it do not shrink so much. I soak the toilet paper in the wood glue water mix and then I fit it in the cracks both under and on top of the plywood. The rock face in front of each dam will be made from styrofoam. I measure the height of each dam with a steel scale. I cut that in piece of paper and fit that towards the rock face so I get the corresponding shape on the paper. Now it's time to cut that shape from styrofoam. I use a kind of thin styrofoam, this is 8mm thick time to cut the rock face. What did it look like? Yeah, it looked like this. Very nice. So I'm cutting vertical like slots like this and with some irregularities and it will be just as the prototype. All right, and about we're done with that. Great. Now, to fit it uh, along the edge of the water surface, I need to bend it. To bend styrofoam, the best way is to push it uh, together and then bend. If you just bend, it will break, which it actually did on the second dam, but hey, I have glues too. The top dam is uh, made of stone, it's a brick wall. So I'm cutting these uh, irregular Japanese bricks, like this, oh, very nice, and fit them all into place. I fix the rock sides and the brick wall with uh, wood glue. I use needles to hold the styrofoam in place until the glue has set properly. I fill the cracks along the edges of the uh, rock faces and the brick wall in the same manner I did with the uh, water surfaces with soaked toilet paper in wood glue, like this. Alright, then it's time for painting. Once everything's dried, I make a mix of plaster which is uh, to fill the crevices and things and make it look more like rock than styrofoam. I use white uh, uh, acrylic uh, color and black and burnt umber to get it a bit softer, warmer tone. And I put that in place with a, a brush like this. And this is what it looks like when the paint plaster is in place. I now add some detail using red and burnt umber. These two colors are dry brushed onto the rock face 
to have it to blend in a bit better with the other rocks around. If you have very little iron in the neighborhood you're uh, modeling, you probably shouldn't be using so much red as we do here in Sweden. Then it's time for the black wash. The black wash consists from a tiny amount of color and most mostly water. Last action on these rock sides will be to dry brush them with a white acrylic uh, color. Make sure to have very little white on your brush when you apply the paint. And that purpose here is just to enhance the contours of the, of the rock side. Now we're ready with the foundation for our waterfall. The three dams are in place. Uh, they only need the water surface. And also, of course, we need the actual waterfalls. The base material in the water surfaces is toilet paper soaked in a mix of water and wood glue. I start by brushing on wood glue on the surfaces and then I apply the toilet paper which I also add extra wood glue water mix on top of, like this, and I push it to the plywood with the brush like this. I add totally two layers on, this, on these dams. I typically use three or more layers if I have, uh, if I want to make big waves or something significant in the water surface. But for this, it's uh, just uh, small uh, breezes. I just want the, some action in the in the water surface, not just entirely flat. I also want to have a bit of waves and irregularities around the surfaces where the waterfalls are, are supposed to land. So that's what I'm, I'm adding here with a brush like this. With this in place, I leave it to dry for at least 72 hours with a heating fan in place. Then it's time for the painting. I combine black, green, white, and a bit of burnt amber brown. So I start by the edges of the water with a kind of white brown mix, and then I add more green into the mix and for the deep areas I also go over to black. Once the paint is in place I smoothen the edges between the different shades with a brush wetened in pure water. Once again I leave it to dry properly and that is typically at least eight hours. Before we get started on the waterfalls uh, I would like to say a word about the different materials that uh, can be used for this. Uh, in this tutorial I will use this one. It's a water effect from a manufacturer called Noch. It's a German manufacturer. There are a lot of uh, different water effects out there on the market. Uh, and. Um, the major problem with them in general is that they turn yellow after some time. Uh, worst off is I had a friend who uh, you know, prepared the whole area, made a, a, a small lake, uh, poured in some uh, two components or if it was a single component uh, type plastic, clear plastic uh, into this lake and uh, it looked awesome to start with. But after six months, it was like uh, a, a pool of mud, you know, all brownish yellow, very ugly. So that is not really what you want it to be when you're ready. So my advice to you uh, is to check out uh, your favorite forum, uh, your internet forum uh, for uh, what's the latest on water products. Uh, to see what products uh, is best right now. This Noch product, I, I took a piece, uh, I, if you see, this one is six months old. 
and it's still quite clear. You can see that it's turning yellow a bit, but not so bad. Uh, this one has not been exposed to uh, day daylight, sunlight. If it does, if your layout is exposed to sunlight, the, this uh, aging effect will be much faster. All right, so let's get started on the waterfalls. When making the waterfalls, we will be combining white color into this white water effect. And to get some contrast, I use a black background. On top of that, I use a, a, a clear plastic food wrapper type, you know, transparent plastic. And then I start to pour out, uh, squeeze out uh, stripes of this uh, water effect. Don't make it too thick. Uh, it's a good advice and make it thinner along the edges. I then have a, a brush like this, a flat brush, not around, and I dip that into into the white um, uh, acrylic paint and I make kind of patterns. I start from the top and make arrow shaped patterns all the way down. I only dip into the new color at the top and then I let the color become less and less the further down I get. We leave the waterfalls to dry and meanwhile we can apply the first layer of clear coat or a high gloss varnish. I apply the varnish on the surface with a brush like this then I leave that single layer to dry. When the first layer of varnish is dry I add a layer of wood glue on top of that. The purpose with this layer of glue is to smoothen out the, uh, the surface a bit and add depth to the look. Our last action with the water surfaces is to apply four to five layers of that high gloss varnish or clear coat. After that it looks nice and shiny. Now it's time to put the waterfalls in place. I peel them carefully off from the plastic and try them on to its position on the wall. I cut them to the right length and make a kind of pre-assembly. Pre it's still kind of tacky, so it will stay where you put it more or less. And then I fix it with a bit of extra water effect, both on top and also in the bottom. Next thing is to add the foam around where the water lands. So I use white uh, acrylic uh, paint and I dab off most of the paint from the brush before I start dabbing onto the water surface. I then dab in circular uh, uh, pattern around the, the landing place for the waterfall. And as I do that, I move outwards and automatically the amount of, of paint on the brush will be reduced and thereby the, the, the foam on the water surface will be less further out. I add height to the foam by adding an extra layers, uh, dots of water effect on top of the foam like this, which I will smoothen out later with a brush. Hey, it starts to look pretty good. If some of the waterfall is a bit stiff, you can fix it temporarily with a needle like this without damage it. One thing I found was that it's not so pretty to have the entire fall a blank or, or high gloss as it is when it comes out. So I typically add a bit of white um, dry brushed acrylic color on top like this. All right, and here we are. Our waterfalls are in place and the village folks have come here to watch the new falls on the layouts.
All right, thank you very much for watching the tutorial. If you like it, please help me by giving it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of the videos, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and you will get a notification once next video goes live. If you're looking for some specific video in some specific topic, best way, best place to browse the videos is on mrrtutorials.com. All right, see ya.